If you're like most men, you probably occasionally find female behavior to be utterly baffling. In particular, the choices that women seem to make about who they date, you know, why is this guy a value and this other guy isn't? Why does she seem to really put a lot of importance on this factor which should be irrelevant and no importance on this factor which seems absolutely critical? Where is this coming from? It's very easy to come to the conclusion that women don't make any sense, they're illogical, they're irrational, etc. The fact of the matter is what they're doing makes complete sense if you understand where it's coming from, if you understand the background of it, if you understand the reasons for it, if you have a good model in your head of female psychology, it all makes sense and it's all incredibly predictable. So what I'm gonna show you here is a clip from my new course, Value Masterclass, which is a course in which I dive deeper into the idea of value and in particular, uh, what women find is valuable than I ever have anywhere. And so in this course, what I do is I start off with the precepts of what is psychology, what is value, how does it work in, in nature, how does it work in evolution, and then I show step by step, I kind of logically derive the, the equation, if you want, the formula for what is value in just about any context you can imagine. So specifically the context for this clip is we've gone through human psychology, we've gone through what is value in nature and in evolution, and we're starting to pick apart what is value for human females. And what we're doing is we're looking at extreme cases. We're looking at cases that may surprise you, cases that don't seem to make sense at a glance, and we're making sure that our model encompasses and includes all these cases. And so similar to how in science, it's the bizarre phenomena in nature that sometimes leads to the biggest scientific breakthroughs, it's the bizarre phenomena in human nature that's gonna lead to our best understanding of it. So without too much further ado, here's the video. Okay, next one. This is one I absolutely love. Um, this is what I call the dumb luck response. This is just a name I came up for this. Um, but um, a couple things, um, and there's, there's two areas of this, and they both have to do with a bartender in my example, but it occurs in all kinds of areas of life. So let's talk about bartenders. Why are bartenders perceived as attractive people in, in bar and club life? Why does that happen? Is a bartender like a particularly like super desirable job? Did he go to years of college to get it? Does he have like a ton of special skills? Not really. I mean, he went to bartending school probably, maybe. Sometimes yes, sometimes no even. Um, he knows how to mix drinks. Um, and in general, they hire people that are relatively personable for it and, and like congruent with the image of the club. So they're hiring like a slightly cool person. Um, but is bartender or should bartender be a really high status job? Probably not. But a lot of girls get serious, serious crushes on bartenders at the bar, right? And whether they act on them or not or whatever. So, um, why is that? Why is it that bartenders get this, this level of attraction? Well, here's what's happening at the bar especially in a crowded bar. So you have maybe one bartender and six or seven people trying to order a drink and they're trying to get his attention. And he is methodically, slowly going about dealing with them. They appreciate him when he does deal with them. They pay him for dealing with them, right? And then, you know, and then more people come to clamor for his attention throughout the night. So when a girl is watching this, logically in the 21st century, she knows that the bartender is just doing his job. But emotionally, what is she seeing? She's seeing everybody responding to this guy. She's seeing everybody seek this guy's attention and this guy be very selective about who he's giving his attention to. He's seeing everybody appreciate this guy and this guy ignore everybody else or not ignore him fully, but seem to be ignoring them more than they're ignoring him, right? Paying less attention to them. And yet it's working out well for him. He's getting away with it, et cetera. So <clears throat> this makes him per be perceived as higher value and actually can make girls get kind of unreasonable crushes on bartenders, even if they've never talked to him or never even interacted with him. So that's dumb luck responsiveness number one. Dumb luck responsiveness with the bartender version two is this. Let's say you're out at a bar and you meet a girl and you've been talking for a little bit and she's like semi-hooked, right? But it's at a point where standing in one place isn't really the right thing um, and deepening the conversation by buying some more time for yourself would be a good move. And maybe even she's with her friends. And so by, by going to the bar, you're able to get away from the friends and get a one-on-one -on -one conversation where maybe you can escalate. So there's all these good reasons to take a girl to the bar. So you walk the girl over to the bar um, with the idea of getting a drink and you run into the scenario I just talked about, which is one bartender or a few bartenders and a lot of people trying to get drinks from a few bartenders. So everybody's clamoring for their attention. Question is, what happens to you in this situation? Well, what happens to you is you're in a weird spot because if you... If you don't try and get the bartender's attention, there's 10 other guys who are, or guys and girls, and they're going to get his attention because they're trying and he just is trying to be efficient and trying to serve the people that are trying to buy drinks. So he just being natural is going to sort of ignore you. And what's the girl going to see? She's going to see you getting ignored and it's going to make your value go down. 
And the longer you stay there and haven't gotten a drink, you're going to seem incompetent. You're going to seem like you invite her for a drink and then you don't even know how to get a drink. And that's going to make your value go down as well. Right. And so it's pure dumb luck, but standing there is making your value go down. But you're also in the situation at that moment where if you just try and get the bartender's attention and don't get it, it's even worse. And also if you try and get the bartender's attention and ignore the girl, unless she's pretty hooked already, um, she may get bored or it may down the interaction a little bit. So there's this weird situation where, um, you know, it's not your fault. It's all just a fucked up situation, but you're actually losing value just because you're in this unusual situation. And this, this idea of dumb luck responsiveness, there's tons of it that occurs in life, right? There's a reason why, um, like say for example, you have a restaurant that's managed by a guy who's in his like thirties or forties that, you know, shouldn't, you know, that's not really a particularly successful job for him at that point in life. Maybe it's kind of a low end restaurant or whatever. And then you have like the the staff working there that's like, you know, 18, 19 year old girls, um, 18, 19, 20 year old girls, stuff like that. Um, and normally in life, they'd be like, oh, burnout loser to this guy. But because he's her manager at the restaurant and because she's at the restaurant and she sees him giving orders and everybody obeying and everyone responding to him, she will instinctively tend to develop attraction for this guy who logically it doesn't make as much sense. This is another situation of that dumb luck responsiveness because you're a leader in a situation because people are responding to you in a particular situation, you're getting way more attraction than you really should um, under normal circumstances or more, more attraction than logically would seem to make sense. So I hope you enjoyed that video. I know for me, it was very eye-opening when I realized these seemingly trivial things can have such a huge impact on the course of an interaction. And I think that's the first time I've ever talked about this particular phenomenon publicly. So um, I hope that it was, it was new for you and as eye-opening for you as it was for me. Um, that was about a five minute sample from Value Masterclass, which is a course of over 10 hours in which I dig deeper into all the different facets of value than I ever have anywhere else. And actually the reason we're releasing it is it was originally performed as a live course and we got so many requests to put it out or to, to, to purchase it afterwards that we're like, okay, fine, we're going to release it. Um, so we've just put it out live and we're actually doing a special deal on it for the next week only. It's $100 off. So check it out at the link you see. You're going to love it.